And you know how it all began? That day I decided that I'm going to fight my fears. We all have fears. Fear of unknown, fear of known, fear of losing people, fear of losing health, money. We want to excel in career, we want to become famous, we want to get money. We are scared all the time. So I wrote down one by one all those fears and I decided that I'm going to overcome these fears one at a time. You know what was my biggest fear? Divorce. I couldn't stand this word. I was trying to cling on to this person who didn't want me anymore, but I said, no, I have to make it work. But the day I decided that this is nothing but my fear, I liberated myself by setting him free. And I made myself emotionally so strong that the day I got the news that he's getting married, I sent him a text that I'm so happy for you and I wish you all the best. And he knows that I pray for him today. My biggest fear, number two, was I won't be able to be a mother again. And that was quite devastating for me. But then I realized there are so many children in the world, all they want is acceptance. So there is no point of crying, just go and adopt one. And that's what I did. I gave my name in different organizations, different orphanages. I didn't mention that I'm on a wheelchair, dying to have a child. So I just told them that this is Muniba Mazari and she wants to adopt a boy or girl whatsoever, but I want to adopt a kid. And I waited patiently. Two years later, I got this call from a very small city in Pakistan. I got a call and they said, are you Muniba Mazari? There is a baby boy and would you like to adopt? And when I say yes, I could literally feel the labor pain. I said, yes, yes, I am going to adopt him. I am coming to take him home. And when I reached there, the man was sitting and he was looking at me from head to toe. And in back of my head, I kept thinking that, oh my God, he is going to say she's on the wheelchair. She doesn't deserve it. How is she going to take care of him? And I looked at him and I said, do not judge me because I'm on the wheelchair. But you know what he said? He said, I know you will be the best mother of this child. You both are lucky to have each other. And that day, now I was two years old, two days old, and today he's six. You'll be surprised to know another bigger fear that I had in me. It was facing people. I used to hide myself from people. When I was on bed for two years, I used to keep the door closed. I used to pretend that I'm not going to meet anyone, tell them that I'm sleeping. You know why? Because I couldn't stand that sympathy that they had for me. They used to treat me like a patient. When I used to smile, they used to look at me and say that, you're smiling, are you okay? I was tired of this question being asked, are you sick? Well, a lady yesterday at the airport asked me, are you sick? And I said, well, um, besides the spinal cord injury, I'm fine, I guess. But those are really cute questions. They never used to feel cute when I was on the bed. So I used to hide myself from people, knowing that, oh my God, I'm not going to see that sympathy in their eyes. It's all right. And today I'm here speaking to all these amazing people because I have overcome the fear. <laughs> you know when you end up being on the wheelchair, What's the most painful thing? That's another fear that people on the wheelchair or the people who are differently abled have in their hearts but they never share. I'll share that with you. The lack of acceptance. People think that they will not be accepted by other people because we, in the world of perfect people, are imperfect. So I decided that instead of starting an NGO for disability awareness, which I know will not help anyone, I started to appear more in public. I started to paint. I always wanted to. 
I have done a lot of exhibitions. I'm Pakistan's first wheelchair-bound artist. I have done a lot of modeling campaigns, different campaigns for brands like Tony and Guy. I have done some really funny breaking the barriers kind of modeling. There was this one by the name Clown Town where I became a clown because I know that clowns have hearts too. And then I also decided that if I really want to make the difference, I am not going to let people use me for their polio campaigns where they will make you a victim at an emblem of misery and mercy and will say that, you know what, give polio drops to your children or they'll become like this girl. I decided that I'm going to join the national TV of Pakistan as an anchor person. And I've been doing a lot of shows for the last three years. So when you accept yourself the way you are, the world recognizes you. It all starts from within. I became, thank you. I became the National Goodwill Ambassador for you and women, Pakistan, and now I speak for the rights of women, children. We talk about inclusion, diversity, gender equality, which is a must. I was featured in BBC 100 Women for 2015. I'm one of the Forbes 30 under 30 for 2016. And it all didn't happen alone. You all are thriving in your careers. You have bigger dreams and aspirations in life. Always remember one thing. On the road to success, there is always we, not me. Do not think that you alone can achieve things. No. There is always another person who is standing behind you, maybe not coming on the forefront, but behind you, praying for you and supporting you. Never lose that person. Never. Never.